concert and then a Sunday morning service, but five consecutive meetings of revival. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God. All right, good. I know you really meant it a lot greater than it sounded, but we're happy to be here. We're happy you're here in the room, and we're happy that you're with us online. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask, um, let's see, our young minister, Tolliver Bullock, to please come and open the, the night for us in prayer. And then our, my dear wife, Giselle Morgan Bullock, is going to come up. And she's going to lead us in worship. Okay, everyone? Yes. Uh, praise the Lord. I hope you are here in expect expectation tonight. Are you, Tom? Are you here in expectation? Yes, sir. I know you are, especially with a snazzy tie on like that. <laughs> I think that used to be Grandpa's tie. Did it? Yes, sir. Uh, so <laughs> you're going to pray. Thank you, sir. Father God, we're going to heaven. I thank you for this. Seven day revival. I thank you for bringing this revival, one last revival before Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ comes returns. I thank you for, I just thank you for the revival, Father God. Jesus, name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to call our first lady. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh man, I think I'm here by myself. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord! Indeed. We have to make double the noise tonight. You can sit on either side. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Holy is the Lord. How many of you know we serve a holy and mighty and awesome God? Amen? Amen.
Jesus. Do you serve a mighty God tonight? Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord. Um, we want to stand on this one because we're going to move our feet just a little bit. Yes. You can just sing for a while and stand up and help me sing this song. Mm. Put your hands together. Tap your feet. Yeah. All right.
to sing it by ourselves, right? Come on, sing it.
But I'm telling you, I am as happy as I appear to be. I'm as happy as I appear to be because I, I wish I had my Bible handy because I always like to hold up my Bible when I say it. I say it, pass me my Bible. Praise God. And then I'm going to shut up, son. I promise. I won't. Where are your notes? Are your notes in here? You want me to get it warmed up for you? Get it started? Okay. Anyway, I'm as happy as I appear to be because of everything that's written yeah. in this volume. Praise you, Jesus. I'm, I'm this happy because of Luke 10, 19, when Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. I'm this happy because when I face the devil, and I have, we can talk about it later if anybody's interested in some stories, I have. I'm so happy because when I face the devil, and it's just me and him alone. Of course, God is always in, he's always in the background looking over. But when it's just me and the devil alone, I look him in the face. And you know what I say? I talk to the devil just like in, as I speak. And I say to him, you know good and well. You know good and well. You have no power or authority in my life. Yes. Now get going. Yes. This country for get out of here. Praise you, Jesus. That's why I'm this happy. And I'm this happy because of, ah, uh, praise you, Jesus. Philippians 4.19. My God shall supply all my need yes. according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yes. And I'm this happy because in my weakness, his power is, made, is, is increased. He, he is strong in my weakness. That's when I'm strong. Yes. So like Paul, I glory. I glory in my infirmities. Jesus. Praise God. You, give me another second. I, listen, I didn't get up here to say all this. I, I got up here to introduce our children. But I want to share something with you. Some have heard, many have heard this already. Because this is a testimony. This is a testimony. That's why I love to tell it. I, I have a lot in common with Paul nowadays in many ways. But one in particular that I'll talk about now, my friends, the Scots, you don't know about this, but you know, history tells us that Paul had very little eyesight. That's why when he wrote, when he signed certain letters, he said, see what large letters I've written with my own hand. Uh, I want to tell you, I have very little eyesight left. Praise God. This one's gone just about pretty much. It's gone enough to be useless. If I go like this, I can't see you anymore. I can detect lights. This one I have about, I guess about the size of a large straw. But let me tell you something. <laughs> oh, praise God. Praise God. First of all, I love the Lord God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. Praise God. And I believe in his healing power. I believe in every word that's written here. Yes. But I also have a special arrangement between God and I. And I know that I have a special miracle coming. Yes. But you see, I, I suspect that he, he's going to use me as he used, uh, what's his name? Lazarus. You remember Lazarus was sick? And Jesus had healed many sick people. But then he heard Lazarus was sick and he just seemed to take his time until Lazarus was good and dead and decayed. And then Jesus showed up and demonstrated the true power of Almighty God. I've said this before. I believe God is going to let me have a Lazarus experience. I believe he's taking his time to heal me to make sure that all my eyesight deteriorates. And I believe I'm going to be standing up preaching one day in the Holy Spirit and his power is going to come upon me. And my sight is going to be restored before the whole world separates so that everybody will know that Jesus Christ is Lord. 
undeniably so. God is going to heal me publicly. I don't know why I felt like telling that, honey. That wasn't even in my mind. But I just want you to know why you see me, why you see me cut, cut into a dance every now and then. It's not because, oh man, praise God. Oh. It's not because of the reasons that many other people are dancing and singing tonight. But it's because I know my Redeemer lives. It's because Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And because I live by the power of Almighty God. And because I believe every word written between these covers. And I live by them. Praise God. I'm going to stop. As I always say, honey, I'm not done. But I'm just going to stop. It's like the radio. It never goes off. You just shut it off. So I'm shutting myself off. Okay? We're going to introduce our children. And I want to, I want to invite your prayers. God has given us what I consider a unique church. Um, we're a young church, a young congregation. I don't mean in age. We've only been a church for a little more than a year now. I never thought to be a pastor when I was young. God waited till later in my life to call me and my wife to this work, this ministry. Those of you who know who have known us for years, we were in evangelism ministry, traveling and singing and preaching. God has called us to the pastoral ministry. But he's given us a unique church lately. We're doing a lot of traveling as a church. We've been, this is our second time in Boston in old, a month. We were here last month, and we're headed to New York soon, and South Carolina soon, and North Carolina soon, and one other place, I think it is. Anyway, but God is sending us out to share the ministry of our church, the music and the preaching of the gospel, the gospel of the kingdom. Praise God. So please keep us in your prayers as God opens doors for us. And also, we thank Fire Escape Coffee House for the use of this facility, but we've got to pay for it. So if you want to help us with that, with that uh, expense, there's a donation basket back there. Feel free. Praise the Lord if you do. Praise the Lord if you don't. I told you, Philippians 4.19, God meets every need. So blessings to you if you decide to help to defray the cost of um, using this building. Children, you come on up and sing. Our children are a big part of our church. If you've seen us online, you know that. They are always present. They're always singing. They're always preaching and, and, and sharing, uh, giving testimonies. And they're going to share two of their own songs tonight. Children, you ready? Yes. Son
That's Henry, he's singing too, you know. Henry's just waiting until he can talk. So yes, hey. Praise God. Isaiah, yes. tell them what song you're going to sing next. I'm going to sing Open Up Your Heart. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God.
Praise God. Praise God. God is very good. He's really blessing our children. Yes, He is. He's awesome. blessing us through our children. He's awesome. very, very blessed. Happy Lord of your church. Actually, our youngest minister, uh, Minister Tolliver Bullock, is going to come and give some words. Praise God. All right. Praise God. God has just called this young man to be a minister back in December. Praise um, God. And if anybody doesn't believe in young ministers, read about Josiah. And let's see, who else was that? Samuel. And who else did God call? All right? Praise the Lord. This is. Hello. My name is Father Book. And the title of my sermon is to Be Ready for Christ's Return. What did 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 2 mean when it said, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. That verse is saying, The Lord Jesus Christ will come swiftly and quietly. If he sees the blood of Jesus on you, you are protected. But if he doesn't see the blood of Jesus, you will go to hell with Satan and his demons. I'm saying to you today, to do what you have to do to make sure that you will go with Jesus to heaven. Maybe you need to make new friends or be around different people. But most of all, you need to build a stronger relationship with God because there will not be any chances left when the Lord Jesus Christ returns. something that we forgot to do. So I'm just going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word and your words that are about to be presented and that have already been presented through Tolliver and through the children's songs and through my wife's songs, etc. Praise God. I pray that you would prepare our hearts, make our hearts good soil to receive your words in Jesus' name. Ah, I'm going to start off with, uh, apologize, I'm going to start off with uh, a song. Okay. Oh, you... No, 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 that's okay. Oh, that's what I said? Okay. Yeah, take a break. <laughs> a song that God gave me. Extremely humbling song. It's a beautiful song. And I was blessed to receive it in a time where I was like, man, God, I'm, I'm really struggling, God. I'm really struggling. I really need some help. But God was there to let me know. It's okay if you don't got it. I do. I got it. Praise God. Praise God. I, I need it.
people's name. They don't like that. Belonging to someone is pretty tough. Especially when you're an adult. When you're a child, you're like, okay, well, my parents already told me to eat my vegetables and I have to wear this jacket and not the one I, I, I like. I used to get in trouble when I was in kindergarten because I had a pair of pants with paint on it. They were called my cool pants. And I wore them every single day and my dad was like, stop wearing these dirty pants. I'm like, but daddy, they're my cool pants. <laughs> so he made me stop wearing them. Now when I go, I can wear all the cool pants I like. <laughs> the thing is, when we're adults, God, just like children, God still runs our lives. Because He's God and we are not. He is wisdom, we are not. He's understanding, we are not. He is strength, we are not. He's perfection, we are not. Yes, amen. He's perfect and we are flawed. Amen. He's righteous, we are not. Amen. He's holy, we are not. Amen. We, it's, it's like in the time of Noah when it said the evil, uh, the imagination of their hearts was evil continually. We think that, oh, that's a different people. That we have a different nature now. Well, Jesus came, so that can't be me. It would have been me and Noah. Noah would have been Noah, and that would have been, that would have been it. I would have not been on the ark with him. You would have not have been on the ark with him. He, mm, he is God and we are not. Yes. I have a message, a message that we've all heard before, but the prelude to this message you have never heard. I guarantee it. It is something that I, although true, I was reluctant to say for reasons you will swiftly understand. Nevertheless, I made a vow, a promise to God that I would say everything that he wanted me to say no matter what. And if you ask anyone in this church, they will attest to the fact that I've done that to the detriment of relationships, of family relationships, friend relationships. I've lost many people in my life, my life who said they would always be there because I told them what God told me to say. I don't regret it because he is God and I am not. Praise God. Amen, Amen son. Praise God. The title of this message is I Am John the Baptist. Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of fathers to, to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. In verse 5 it said, Behold, I will send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Praise God. So now let's look at Joel chapter 2 verse 31. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. So now we know that Elijah will come before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. But now we, we so we, what is the sign of this great and dreadful day? Oh, the sun, well, let's read that again. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into, into blood before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Great and terrible day, it says here. Excuse me. That hasn't happened yet. The sun is still yellow and the moon is still white and sometimes orange. So that lets us know the great and terrible or great and dreadful day of the Lord has not come yet. Okay? Revelation chapter 6 verse 12. Praise God. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. So this is revelation. This is talking about a seal. Praise God. A seal being opened. Mm, a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair. <laughs> And the moon became his blood. So
So Revelation, we know that the Revelation, written by uh, the Apostle John, the Isle of Patmos, we know that that was written about times that have not come yet. Just a reference, just a confirmation that we have not seen. It hasn't been a time that came and then went and we just missed it. No, it still hasn't come yet. This great and terrible, great and dreadful day of the Lord has not come yet. Matthew chapter 17, praise God. Verse 12 and 13. Again, Matthew chapter 17, verse 12 and 13. But I say unto you that Elias, so I'm going to stop there. We, uh, some know, some don't. Elias is Greek for Elijah. Praise God. So we learned in Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, that Elijah would come again. So here, we're going to, we're going to learn some new information on that. So that, again, that's Matthew chapter 17, verse 12 and 13. Praise God. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not. But I've done unto him whatsoever they listed. Mm -hmm. Likewise shall also the Son of Man <laughs> suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. So John the Baptist, this is Jesus speaking to the disciples, where Jesus has just told his disciples that Elijah has already come. What Malachi said would happen has happened. Praise God. He's come in the form of John the Baptist. Praise God. <laughs> So the prophet Elijah came and then was taken up by a whirlwind. Around 400 years later, the prophet Malachi prophesied that Elijah would come again and turn the hearts of families back together before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Later, Jesus tells us that Elijah had already returned as John the Baptist, and yet the hearts of families are not turned toward one another. In fact, they are now more divided than we have ever seen them. Mothers are turning their sons into daughters. Fathers are turning their daughters into harlots. Children vehemently disobey their parents because of their hatred towards them and deep lack of respect. The prophecy of Malachi has not yet been fulfilled. This must mean that Elijah and thus King John the Baptist must again return before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. In the summer of 2020, God spoke to me and called me John the Baptist. Elijah and John the Baptist have come again, and I am he. I say now, that which was said before, prepare me the way of the Lord. Matthew chapter 24, verse 42 and 44. Watch therefore. For ye know not yes. what hour the Lord doth come. <clears throat> Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Praise God. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour the Lord doth come. Watch, be, be, be uh, sober minded, be vigilant. You don't know when, when, when the Lord is coming. Praise God, talking about Jesus. Therefore be ye also ready. So be ready. Because you don't know when he's coming, be ready. For in such an hour as you think not. So in the hour where you do not think. So in the time where you do not think he's going to come. In that exact time will he come. How do we know that? The Bible says so. Praise God. Jehovah God, the creator of all things, is love. From his love came his mercy. From his mercy came Jesus the Messiah. From Jesus came grace. From grace came forgiveness through repentance unto eternal life yes. in heaven with Jehovah. Praise God. God. Amen. Praise God. So Amen. all these things led to repentance. So what is repentance? Praise God. Repentance is the spiritual act of turning your back on your sins and walking towards God's righteousness. Amen. So if you are to turn your back on sin and, and walk towards God, that is repentance. Amen. Praise God. That which coincides with repentance is confession of your sins followed by asking God for forgiveness. People uh, sometimes conflate the two. 
I, I ask for forgiveness, thus me, I'm repentant. No, repentant, you can ask for forgiveness and then continue to do those things that you've been doing. Repentance is to turn your back on sin. Forgiveness is to say, God, I'm sorry for what I've done. Please forgive me. Amen. Amen. Use that blood that Jesus shed. Yes. Wash it out. Amen. Blood it out. Please don't see that anymore. Amen. I don't want you bringing that up. I don't want you to open the books. Yes. I see Revelation. Yes. I say, oh, Junior, I see here. No, God, please. I repent. I won't do that anymore. And I ask you forgiveness. Please wash that away. Yes. Blot it out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Praise God. So to ask for forgiveness and to repent, that takes faith. Yes. To confess to God, <clears throat> repent, and then ask for forgiveness takes a belief in the mercy, grace, and authority of God. Psalm chapter 86, verse 5. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive. Thank you, Praise Jesus. God. Thank you, Jesus. Ready to forgive. Thank you, Jesus. And kindness Thank you, Jesus. and mercy unto all them that call upon thee. If you call upon God, Father God, I have sinned. I repent, Father God. I'm turning my back on sin. I renounce yes. that. I renounce that. Please forgive me. Praise you, Jesus. Please forgive me. He is ready. He is Thank ready. You, Thank you. Praise you, Father. Abundant in mercy. Praise you, Father. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Praise God unto all them that call upon me. Yes. I take faith. Yes. Praise God. Jude. Praise God. Chapter 1, verse 4. <laughs> Not chapter 1, excuse me. There's only one. There's only one chapter in Jude. But it always feels weird to write in the other chapters. I feel like I'm going to mess up. So I always write chapter 1, although there's no chapters. <laughs> Jude, the only chapter, verse 4 through 6. Praise God. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before, uh, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. So there are men of old who have snuck in. This is Jude talking to the church. They've crept in, they've snuck in. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh who were before of old, ordained for this condemnation. Ordained means, ah, uh, they are set, they've been set, the time has been set aside. It's, it's something that's come down. Uh, 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 a judgment has come down upon these men. Yes. They've been ordained for condemnation. Why is that? Yeah. Ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into yes. seriousness yes. and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance. You must have forgot. I'll put you in remembrance. Though ye once knew this, how, uh, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Mm -hmm. And the angels which crept not, mm, excuse me, and the angels oh, which kept not their first okay. estate, the angels who did not keep their original jobs. Yes. Iniquity is found in them. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he had uh, he has reserved an everlasting chains under darkness. Under darkness. I want to saw it. Under darkness. Mm -hmm. Under darkness until the judgment of the uh, of the great day. The great day. Yes, it's coming. Maybe it doesn't say uh, uh, dreadful or terrible, but it sounds like it will be for them. Praise God. There are those who have desecrated uh, the grace of the Lord. When I think of the word desecrated, Amen. Amen. I, I think of only uh, this one foul image that always comes into my mind. And, and it's, it's so inappropriate to say, but it's the only thing that I can think of that properly says, uh, uh, describes what it means to desecrate. And I simply say, to squat over. If someone come and desecrate your lawn, To the grace of God. They squat over what you over your property. They squat over something that does not belong to them. So when it says they desecrate the grace of our Lord Jesus Amen. Christ, Amen, son. They squat over it and relieve themselves. There are those who have desecrated the grace of the Lord, of the Lord denied his deity, yes. and then did not believe him. 
Those people are assigned to condemnation because of their unrestrained disrespect of God's grace. Yes. All opportunities to receive and then follow Jesus are now gone. Mm. Yes. And they are banished, chained under darkness alongside demons, waiting for the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Yes. Will that be you? Mm. Praise God. We read in Matthew chapter 24, verse 42 and 44, that we do not know when Jesus will return. So be ready because he's coming when we are unaware. So how do we be ready? Do the opposite of what was done in Jude, chapter, uh, Jude the only chapter, verse 4 through 6. I'm getting it already. Reverence the grace of God. Yeah, let him sit up here. Reverence the grace of God. Great yes, respect. For great honor with the grace of God. What is grace? What is grace? What is this word we always ah God's grace and God's favor? What is grace? Grace is divine assistance, divine referring to God. Yes. There is no one who is divine except God. Amen. That, that goes with the word deity. It, it, it's, it's a word that's only used for God. Only should be used for God. Mm -hmm. No one is divine but, but Jehovah. Mm -hmm. So grace is divine assistance. Assistance means help. People often get grace and mercy confused. Mercy is when you don't punish someone who deserves to be punished. So when God didn't kill me, when I blasphemed his name, that was mercy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But when Jesus died for me, Ah, that I may have eternal life with the Father. That was grace. Yeah. Praise God. So if you want to be ready for the return of Jesus, respect God's grace and don't deny him or his son. Yes. Jude who wrote this uh, was reminding, uh, reminding the church Reminding the church uh, 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 of, 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 of men who have crept in. Yes. Jesus told us that there will be false prophets and yes. false teachers. Yes. But when we hear uh, preachers on TV, it seems like they're saying things different than the things we've heard as children about giving our lives to Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. devoting our time to him. Mm -hmm. Thinking on the word of God day and night, meditating on it, yes. and allowing it to live in our hearts as we live in God. All I hear is profit yeah. and benefit mm -hmm. and yes. gain. Yes. And today's your day, mm -hmm. and you can have it. If you do this, yeah. get this towel, get this oil, mm -hmm. wear these shoes, dress like this, yeah. read this book. Never the Bible. No, they never tell you to read the Bible. Read this book. Which one is that? The Bible? No, I, I read it. <laughs> read this book. The Bible? No, no. My, my mentor wrote this book. It's called Pray, Pray Your Way to Success. Daily Prayers. This verse. Oh, this is my life verse. No weapon uh, not formed against me. Not in my house. This is my life verse. I'm the head, not the tail, not me. Mm -mm. I'm not the tail. I'm the head. This is my life verse. Mm -hmm. Praise God. All things, all things working for my good. Mm -hmm. People never finish that verse. That's right. All things worked ah, for the good of those that love the Lord. Yeah. And Jesus, mm, mm -hmm. and Jesus said, those who love me keep my commandments. Yes. Those who love me keep my word. So if I don't keep the word of God, I don't even love him. Thusly, not all things are working for my good. All good and perfect gifts come from God. That's why they work for my good, because I'm under God. And thus he blesses me with gifts. Ah! So if I don't keep his commandments, all things are not working for my good. Because now I'm not under God. So then who am I under? There are only two powers. Amen. Yes. God made a perfect, perfect earth mm -hmm. where lions ate flowers yeah. and, and grass. Yeah. And, and children could have played. I know there were no, but children could have played in the, in the cockatrice den yeah. with the venomous snakes. Yeah. 
That's the land that God created. But then sin came in through disobedience. Ah, so if everything was perfect through God, was good, as he kept saying when he created the world, and, and then the land was cursed, as he told Adam, and, and we know that he, 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 uh, Elisha had to, at one point in time, pray over a body of water because it was cursed. Mm -hmm. So if we know that everything was good through God, and now it is not good because of sin, ah... Then if I don't keep his word, if I don't keep his commandments, and that's just not just his ten commandments, a commandment comes from the word command. A command is anything God has told you to do. Yes. Amen. So if I don't keep every word that God has spoken in this book in my heart, thusly I do not love God, thusly all good perfect gifts do not come to me, I am under who? The devil, and then I am what? I am cursed. Yes. Amen. Yes. See, it's just the word. I just, I only said what was in the word of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not far-fetched to perceive what I've just given unto you. Yeah. If I do not have this word, every single verse, every period and every punctuation, if I do not have it in my heart, I do not love God. That's what Jesus said. That's his words. That's his words. Keep my words. So now, we, we respect, we revere the grace of God and we do not deny Him. We say, Jesus Christ, you are Lord of all. You tell me what to do. You tell me what to wear, what to eat, where to go, when to go there. You're in charge. You're Lord. Lord. Like when you were young, before you owned your house, and you had a landlord, and they said, this is the rent, and you said, no, it's not, and they said, yes, it is. And God called the light day and the darkness night. Mm, excuse me. And God called the light day and the darkness he called the night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning were the first day. That's why later on in Mark chapter 1, Mark chapter 1 where, where Jesus was healing, uh, healing a, 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 a crib. As a Christian's event. These days they would have been. But, but Jews who were in the synagogues were the followers of God. They were attempting to be obedient. That's what we believe. Uh, he was casting demonic spirits out of them. It says devils, but we know that's translated from the Greek as the one devil. So he's casting demonic spirits, evil spirits, unclean spirits out of people in the synagogue. And later on that day it says, and then when evening came, more people brought their sick. They had to wait till evening because now that was considered the next day. It was no longer the Sabbath. The evening and the morning were the first day. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a bunch of hyperbole and simile and poetry. And when God says, I created all things in six days, all things were created in six literal days. And on the seventh day when he rested, it wasn't because he was tired. He was looking at his work. Saying what I've done is good. If you keep my commandments, yes, and I will abide in you, my Father, and I will take up our abode in you, yes, and you will live in yes. us, mm -hmm. yes. People are keeping the word of God. You know what's so funny? They're not, it's not like they're neglecting the word of God for, for bad reasons. God, I'm a family. I can't. If I said this, if I said that two men can't be together, I'd lose my job. God, I have a mortgage. You know this. You gave me the house. You blessed me. God, I can't go to work saying this. I can't go to, I can't go everywhere and, and be this. God, I love my son. I love my daughter. I can't tell them, don't come to my house dressed like that. I can't say that to them. I love them, God. That's my child. That which you try to keep, you will lose. Amen. That's the word of God. That which you try to keep, you will lose. Mm -hmm. I know a man, he had a oh, beautiful wife and 
handsome boys, and God called him to ministry. God had him doing a lot of work in ministry, preaching, singing, teaching, going here, traveling. And his wife said, man, you got to do all that. You can't stay home a couple of nights. You got to go every night. So he listened to his wife. That man now, hmm, he was a big, strong man. That man doesn't have a wife anymore. She's married to someone else. He doesn't have his boys anymore. They're all in the world. He doesn't have arms. I'm literally, he has no arms. He has no legs because of disease. Everything he tried to keep is gone. He doesn't have the house he had. He doesn't have the dogs. He doesn't have the clothes. He has nothing that he used to have. He now has to live in a nursing home. Everything he tried to keep, he lost. My father, this is, this is glory to God. My father knows that. My father at the same time did not stay home. One of the most familiar sounds I can think of is the sound of the keys in the door. When we heard the keys in the door, Daddy's home! Because Daddy was always, he's always gone. Not in the world, not running around, not trying to make the most money. No, he was doing ministry. He was singing and preaching. Teaching. Wanted to be obedient. He has his wife, he has his firstborn son, he has his eldest daughter, and those are all his grandkids. Praise God. Give it to God. Obey the word of God. Keep this in your heart. Devour it. It is our food. Yes. I need this more than my bread. Amen. My bread. It is water. It Amen. is life. Devour this. No daily verse. No daily verse. Can you eat? Can you eat just one cracker a day and be okay? Can you? Oh, no, I ate yesterday. I'm fine. I'll be good for a few more days. Just for practice. Every time you, ah, oh, man, I'm hungry. Every time you feel hungry, read. And then eat. I'm not saying stop eating. No. No, God created us. We need food. We need sustenance. But every time you get hungry, read the word as well. Okay, all right, I'm hungry. Let me read the word and then I'll eat and see if your life doesn't start changing in ways you cannot imagine. Praise God. Devour this. Yes. Praise Jesus. Praise the bitter Jesus. and the sweet. Praise, Praise Jesus. God. The bitter and the sweet. Keep it in your heart. Praise because Jesus. when you keep God's commandments, Jesus, Praise Jesus. that's when you show him I really, really love you. Praise Jesus. To God be the glory. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Excellent so I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of what God is doing in our church. Praise God. So I'm overjoyed and I could say much more just because I'm so happy in Jesus, but I think this is a good stopping time. I don't want you to, I don't, I don't want you to, I don't want this to be like church used to be, even though I don't want it, but you know, we could do some hours when I was young, you know. You probably remember those days too. Praise God. No, we don't have to belabor what the Holy Spirit has already done. I'm just going to ask, um, praise Jesus, my wife, to come. I'm going to play a little music and listen. Come, you're going to pray. This is revival. We, we didn't come all, we came all the way up here from Central Florida. That's where we live now. I was born and raised here. Um, but we, God sent us there several years ago. And we all live in Central Florida. We didn't come here to entertain. In fact, it's really nice in Florida right now. <laughs> to be honest, when we left, okay, the weather was beautiful. 
We didn't come for entertainment. We didn't come for the weather. We didn't come for vacation. We came for ministry. We came because Jesus sent us here this week. And we're not just in ministry, by the way, these nights and, and Sunday morning. During the day, we as a church, we are visiting folks and praying. We're very, very busy this week. We're actually busy all the time, but we're very busy this week. In fact, we've been so busy, we actually have been talking to my son and daughter. I'm thinking about we need to take a day of rest tomorrow. But I'm saying that to say this, not to impress you by saying, oh, we're something else. You wouldn't believe how good we are. That's not what I mean when I say those things. What I mean is we don't want to leave this room tonight with unmet needs. We don't want to walk away from unmet needs. So first of all, I want to give you the opportunity. If you would like to come forward in an outward show that I have a need that I'd like you to agree with me on and I'd like you to pray with me. I believe in the laying on of hands, by the way, the anointing with oil, as the scripture says. Praise God. We are ready, willing, and quite able to help you with that. Praise God. We want to give you the opportunity to come to the altar and present your need before God and we'll join you in that. If no one will take that invitation, we're going to pray, my wife is going to pray that the Holy Spirit will do the things in this room tonight that he intended to do all along. Take over, give folks a chance to come forward if they'd like. And if not, we'll pray anyway. So, one way or the other, we're praying for him, Lord Jesus. <laughs> so, take this opportunity to come forward if you have a need, whatever it is. There's nothing, there's no need that's too small or insignificant for God's attention. And we know that we serve a big and mighty God, so there's no problem that's too big for Him. So if you wish, come and let us pray for you. He wants us to trust Him tonight. With whatever it is. Because He's able to meet every need. Father, I pray right now for every person under the sound of my voice. Those who are joining us via social media, I pray for them as well. Father, many of us have needs, Lord, that you know about. Some of us have needs that were never shared with others. Perhaps they're too personal, too private. Maybe the needs are, or the issues are embarrassing or shameful. But Father, I pray right now for every need, Lord. And I trust you with every need. Because you still need needs, Lord. You love your children. And you never look past us. You always look at us. Yes, Jesus. And I thank you for that, Lord. We trust you tonight to meet every need, Lord, whatever it is. Whoever's carrying you. Touch that person right now, Lord. With your mighty loving hand. Yes, Jesus.
your knees, you trust him with your life, fully trust him. That's what he wants from you tonight, to fully and completely trust him, knowing that he will never set you wrong. Yes, Jesus. That he wants the best for you in every area of your life. But he wants every area of your life. And he wants you to trust him with every area of your life. to be trustworthy, to be faithful. And so we trust you, God. 